start planting the last bit of corn here for 2022. It is June 12th, Sunday, June 12th. It's actually my brother Richard's birthday today. And he is 33 years old. So we're planting in behind the barn. We've got, oh, maybe 60 acres left to do. I've got some uh, disking that we need to get done here a little later on on a, a couple of hay fields that we had taken first cut hay off of and uh, we're going to get that planted as well. We've also got some ground down in behind uh, the barn that's not plowed yet that Andrew is spreading manure on here right at the moment. So like I said, we are in behind the barns. My father ended up planting this to my left uh, with his planter, the six row planter. He planted it out of corn and um, he has gone cotton hay now. So he ended up planting just shy of 900 acres of corn with that six row planter which is uh, a lot of corn for a six row. So we're just gonna keep at it here. I have just a few acres left in this one field here. We're gonna go over to where we're excavating. And this is all I will have left to do here. I ended up planting this little south section off here a little bit ago and um, I've just got this one section left. So we're putting a barn addition here. Uh, they've got the under barn manure storage put in and the uh, reception pit that is gonna come off of the side of the barn uh, there already. And they're due to start this uh, barn addition here sometime in uh, July. Uh, we are behind the barns now, between the barns and our uh, Curtis Road. And the barn that they're adding on to is that barn eight right there. We put an addition on it uh, I want to say it was three years ago now. And then the barn to the right of it is barn six. Now you might say, well, where's barn seven? Well, barn seven's over by my house and we numbered the barns as we built them. So uh, this barn six, you can see the, the different uh, shade in the roof there. That was added on to a couple of years ago or maybe it was last year, I, I forget which. And then barn eight here was added on to uh, maybe three years ago, the, the prior year. Uh, so this barn eight's gonna be a long barn once we get uh, this addition on here. So it is going to spread out to the edge of this uh, manure storage. They did the excavating here maybe uh, they've had it done for a couple weeks now. So we'll just fly over the top of the uh, planter here. We'll get a little bit of a, a view from this other side here. And the parlor is... The parlor is on the other end of uh, barn 6. So when we originally built these barns, we can fly over the top of these here. We originally built these barns here, this barn five to our right, uh, only went to about, well, you can see the spot in the roof right there. Then we added on to it. And then the parlor here is to our left. I've got to turn around. The parlor here is to our left, and then we've got the connected building going over into barn five coming across to the back side of the parlor. And then the parlor, oh, this original part of the parlor, oh boy, what did we do here? We added on to, I'm trying to remember. 
remember here what we did. This, well, you can kind of see the way the roof is changed there. That um, bar at six has been added on to. I think we've added on to that three times now. But originally was only to this one section here. You can kind of see the the difference in the roof there. But uh, this connected building here. Uh, this connected building runs all the way across the back of the parlor, then it goes over to uh, barn 8, and then we'll fly over to barn 9, and we'll show you the connected building that is hooked to uh, barn 9 here. i got to try not to get caught in these uh, power wires here, and then we've got barn 9 way over on this other side, and we have a connecting building uh, coming off of it. There's a little break in it so that we can get through the driveway here and then uh, that allows us to be able to get dry cows over in this one section spring and heifers and whatever that way we don't have to hook on to a cattle trailer at all. So we'll get the drone back over to the planting tractor here. I've got just a couple of passes left. Fly over the uh, hutches. You can see the difference in the roof here. We added on to this barn 8. A few years ago, like I said, barn 6 was added on to two years ago. I don't it might have been last year. Time is time is getting away from me here. But, um, I gotta turn on the headland. So I'll get the drone flown back to the, uh, corn planter here. All this, this beeping is, is the, uh, fertilizer detection system. It alerts me that the planter is, well, once the planter comes out of the ground, it alerts me that it has a, uh, it has detected no uh, fertilizer flow. So that's why you hear all the beeping that's going on. I have zero sensor problems today. Actually, I shouldn't say zero. I had a few problems to start off with. I had a couple of uh, load cell sensor problems. I fixed those. I just unplugged them and plugged them back in and played with them a little bit. And then, uh, I had a couple of pressure sensors that I uh, plugged in and unplugged a couple of times and now we're golden. I have no problems. It's telling me that I have a few rows not planting because I am into the outside rounds of the field and uh, I've got just a couple of rows planted. Now I've raised the planter. Now I'm going to put it back down. I've got maybe three rows that are going to plant right here now. And then I've got just a little bit left over in behind me on this one stretch of the barn, new barn site here where it goes up next to the driveway out onto uh, Curtis Road. Maybe I'll throw the drone up in the air when I get to uh, Terra Disc. It looks like I might run that myself here for a little while here. Uh, this morning, I wanted to see what the conditions were like. We did put a bit of manure on the other day, and it might be a little wet still from the uh, manure. So, that'll, uh, 
I'll do it for now. We'll catch back up with you a little later. I decided not to land the drone on the uh, cement pad there, as you can see, and we're just kind of rambling on. So we'll catch back up with you in a little while here. Well, Sarah ended up taking my place. I started off with the Pottinger Terra disc after I got done planting that field in behind the barn. She was on some small fields, or we were on some small fields with the Pottinger, and I didn't end up throwing the drone up in the air. And I'm actually going to go down where she's running the Pottinger, and we're going to start planting corn. But I figured I would get some footage of the uh, two mowers in action here. This is uh, the 7930 with a new set of Pottinger triple mowers that we have hooked to uh, the 7930. My father's running this set of mowers here. And they're having to cut this field here uh, going one way. So you see he, he had ended up getting up to the one end of the field here. And he's going to go ahead and jog back down through the field the other way. I'm sitting at a pickup over here on this one side of the field. And my nephew, Teddy, he's cutting with the other set of mowers that is on the 7290. We bought this set of mowers here last year. Uh, this tractor here I used to plant corn with. And we ended up replacing it with the 8320R. And we originally bought this tractor for a spare uh, mower tractor. It has a front hitch and a PTO on it. And we picked this set of mowers up here last year and uh, got them mounted on to it. So I now feel he'll get up to the end here. He'll pick up, he'll jog back uh, the other way. This alfalfa is pretty heavy and it is laying down to the north here so they they can't go uh, back and forth they just have to pick up run down to the other end of the field and uh, go back uh, the other way so just like what my father's doing he's gonna pick up and jog back down through the other end of the field so these mowers are, oh, what the heck are they? They're 34 feet, I believe. A 10-footer on the front and two 12s on uh, the back here. So they're both jogging down uh, to the other end of the field. They'll get set up into place, and then they'll run on up through. Uh, going towards the road, cutting from the north uh, to the south. So I figured I would just check in with these guys. I've gotten a couple of questions or a couple of remarks on my last videos here. You know, hey, we need to see what you guys mow hay with. We also have a John Deere South Pelb uh, W235 uh, John Deere mower. That's got a 16-foot head on it. 15 or 16 whatever the heck they are here but um that's roughly half the width of one of these uh potting or mowers now if this hay was a light crop they would be able to go right back and forth and cut 
Yeah, I think they can knock down about 20 acres an hour uh, with each machine here. So these do a nice job for us. They can cut a lot of hay. A lot of guys are using them um, in the area here. Whether it be a Pottinger mower or a, a Coon or a John Deere or a Klaus. But uh, most of the guys in the immediate area here, they have the uh, Pottinger mower. We used to mow hay with a couple of John Deere Mocos. We had a 946 and a 956. And it required two guys to do the work of what this one guy's doing here my nephew with the uh one mower we would need four of them to do the work that my father and my nephew's doing so as you can see this is a pretty heavy crop here and you can see the size difference in the windrows there is a um small one in the in the middle and then it's dropping a uh, wide one to uh, either side now we don't run conditioners at all on these mowers there is conditioners on the uh, John Deere self pelled mower that we have uh, that's got the v-shaped flails in it um, we have had the flails on the uh, pull type mowers and then prior to the pull type mowers we used to run the uh, chevron rolls that were in the uh, older uh, new hounds that we had i can't quite see where my father is he's right there with the uh 7930 so you see we got a few spots here where there's nothing growing and that's just spots where the field lays a little wet and the alfalfa killed out and being this that this is a uh, herbicide resistant uh, variety we don't have any weeds growing so if this wasn't a herbicide resistant alfalfa you would have a oh some kind of a grasses start growing there and then they would reseed themselves and you'd have them growing all the way across the field here so we're going to go ahead and jog back to the truck here actually do you want to see you guys probably want to see the 7930 jog up across here mowing a little hay i am just about out of battery but we'll we'll get into it here the um, we have experimented a little bit here with the well, you got some some more winter kill right there. Level is low. The aircraft we'll cancel that. Point in 10 seconds. I get a warning when the battery gets down to that. Well, I guess I was at 40 percent. I need to turn that warning off. But at any rate, um, we've got a little bit of winter kill in this field here. This seeding is a couple of years old. And you might ask, well, why didn't you just go in and reseed it here this spring when you reseeded the rest? Well, alfalfa gets somewhat, I think they would call it acidic. And um, if you put new seed in with the uh, older uh, seeding, it'll actually sour out the... Um, the new crop there the new uh, seed that you're trying to uh, replace it with and it'll start competing and it actually won't grow now you might say well why did you reseed the other stuff if you reseed within a 12 month period um, the new seed will take but um, it will not take uh, when it's with the older more mature uh, stand of alfalfa now the uh, drone kind of shows some uh, bad spots there and they look horrific from the uh, from the um, from being up quite a bit in the air but it's actually there's there's more there than uh, what you think 
So this is the same uh, potting or mower. It's just on a different tractor. So we've been at it here for, I don't know, 10, 12, 13 minutes. And they've got a pretty good amount of this 38, 36 or 8 acre field uh, knocked down here. So we'll uh, go ahead and fly back to the truck here because I am going to end up having this damn drone fall in the field if I don't get it back before the battery uh, dies here. But this is uh, some thick alfalfa, that's for sure. This stuff will probably go two, it'll go right around two dry tons to the acre, I'm going to have to guess. So uh, you lift it up, bang, bang, jog back down to the other end of the field. Well, we're going to go ahead and get back to the shop, jump back on the corn planter, and plant some corn. We'll join back up in a little while here, maybe. Maybe I can catch Sarah with the uh, pottinger on um, the farm that we're going to be uh, planting on. We'll catch you. We'll catch up with you in a little while. Just as we were landing the drone, Sarah had called and said there is some bolts missing in this scraper bracket that is on the back side of this Terra disc here. So we're going to have to get some, get some measurements made here and we'll have to figure out what it needs here. We got a trusty tape measure. Have to wander over and see what we've got going on. See, she sent me a picture of what it needs. We've got one bracket missing right here, and a bolt missing where? Right there. All right, so what we're gonna have to do is make up a, a flat bar piece like that one, and we're gonna have to get a couple of bolts in there. So, this, is, this one right here is the one that's missing a piece of flat bar, and it's looking like we're right at four and a half inches keep moving the tape measure back and forth yeah kind of hard to get a measurement there yeah four and a half inches on that looks like we're a good five eighths it's actually a uh, three quarter inch hole there so we'll we'll bring down a five eighths bolt for that Looks like Jared's got just a half inch bolt in there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll run up to the shop, make up a plate for that. Don't leave here because the field that you got down there, I'm gonna have to travel farther. So, I'll make up a piece of flat bar and I'll bring down a bowl, actually. Everybody's kind of wondering what length do we need to be here. We need to be about six inches long. So a piece of all thread might do the trick because we're limited with these longer bolts here. So yeah, six inches. So, all right, we're gonna make up a piece of flat stock. We'll come down and get her going and she'll be able to move on down the road there. She's got like I don't know, it's just shy of 40 acres to do down on oh, a few miles from here. We can get this going. Let her get down there. And then I could plant these two, right? Yeah. How's the tractor doing? I don't know. You don't know? 
What pole's harder, the chisel plow or the tear disc? Chisel plow. Chisel plow, pole's harder. So, well, all right, I'll, uh, I'll get some pieces made here and come down with some hardware. All right. Well, you guys probably thought we were gonna work on that down the field, and that's not the case. We had to bring it up here. I had the, I made a new plate here. It's three quarter inch material, but this one here I'm using a piece of seven eighths. We just took some flat bar, drilled a couple five eighths holes in it. Go ahead. And we had to use all thread because we don't have the bolts uh, long enough to uh, work on that. So I did, I was planning on just taking the parts down there and uh, putting it on there in the field. But as you can see, we have a different horse hooked to this implement here. 9560's got some problems. We're not sure what. But when I took off with it here this morning, it didn't sound quite right, but I hadn't been around that tractor in quite a while. And when Sarah took my spot, she called me immediately and she said, this thing just doesn't sound right. So well, I didn't think it sounded right either. So it went into limp mode. I thought it had an emissions problem, but Jared seemed to think it has an injector issue. So Sarah limped it back to the farm here, and now you get to try the 9320. It's a little louder than what you're used to. It's got a deeper tone to it, it sounds a little better. So we are gonna have to see how this handles this potting or tool. We've had the 8320R on it. We've had the 9410, the 9560, We've had this on it. The 8360. We haven't had this on there, have we? Last year, Jared did bring some. No, it was 9410, wasn't it? I thought it was 9310. Yeah, maybe it was 9320. She might be right. But um, what do you got left? You got that second field left to do? Finish? I just got the headlands. Just got the headlands. Well, I'll be down with the corn planter in a little bit. So, um, yeah. Stay tuned. You'll have to... Uh, See what we find wrong with the 9560. Actually, we'll call Kaz Equipment. And uh, have them come over and take a look at it. Maybe they can just plug the computer in and come up with a quick diagnosis as to what it needs. Um, what you might also notice is the uh, discs are getting small on this tool, especially where the uh, tires run on the tractor here so we're gonna have to get all new iron for this terra disc before we go into uh wheat ground uh this fall so well giddy up you gotta get some ground done so i can get that planter going right yeah. all righty well she is gonna go back down and get back into it here and uh, we'll get going with the planter here shortly she had them two small pieces to do I wanted those more or less wanted those done before she got to before I got down there so that um, we could be working on them with a the planter while she's working on that big piece uh, she'll get folded up here. Looks like we got a soft tire right there. I'm going to have to address that here while she's right at the shop. But this will give you an idea of what things look like when this one folds up. The other potting area that we have, uh, that one folds up uh, vertically. This one more or less folds around horizontally here. So it's got that large ram in the center. That's actually a two-piece ram and you can adjust uh, some depth um, and some leveling with that uh, cylinder as well. Once this gets around to the locked position, the levers will lock down on it, and when you go to unfold it, you have to um, put that into the uh, unlock mode. So that's gonna come across, gotta fold up this a little farther. Bang, that's kind of locked here in a 
second. There's that one, that's locked. Now we were talking about discs earlier. If you look down through these discs here, these ones are larger until you get to these ones here, and these ones here are smaller. So we'll get some wind in that tire and we'll send her on her way. Well, we're not sure what the weather's doing, but we don't see anything on the radar. We're getting a few sprinkles right now. But I think that's going to be short-lived. So just before we run down and try to plant some corn, we'll go ahead and step in here and we'll look at the... Uh, Super liner that Jared's been working on. Alex had been chisel plowing down below. Looks like she stopped in to get a bite to eat or something. So she stopped at the house. And we'll kind of take a peek at the super liner here. Kind of give you a little look see as to the progress that Jared has made here on this super liner. Now he had put this fifth, fifth wheel, uh, that fifth wheel, panel plate on here. And this is off of the freight liner. He just cut it off and stuffed it in the frame, bolted it, welded it, plated it, everything like that. He ended up, oh, just tripped over that. He ended up uh, pulling the Dayton wheel drums, brake drums and whatever off, switched it over to hub pilot hey, hub pilot or they stud oh. hub hub pilot is the uh single nut the, the modern one and uh he ended up putting a tail light assembly mud flap assembly and then he's also got some fenders that'll go on here so we're gonna go ahead and jump on the planner and we'll join back up with you with this project at a later date he wire wheeled the frame POR'd it, put the POR 15 on it, top coated it with some gloss black, and he also had the uh, fifth wheel rebuilt. What is the rating on this fifth wheel? It's a 250 plate load, I think. Yeah, so it's a little heavier, a little more heavy duty than what we're currently using on the uh, other trucks. He's just putting his axle stops on, his bump stops on here. Now, and, uh, well, if I can plant, why don't you uh, plan on bringing that fertilizer truck down in a while? He's got some new glad hands on here for the air hookup on the uh, tag-along trailer that we have, and eventually we're thinking about getting a trailer that will pull the uh, crawler as well. We can pull it with this the C5 and the uh, little Volvo. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into planter. Camelback suspension. What year is this Mac? 85. 85 Superliner with a uh, Cat 3406B. Well, we're on location here. I don't know if we're gonna get rained out or not, but I don't see anything on the radar. However, the sky is black. We're only a couple of miles away from the farm. Sarah's just making her last time around here on this second field. And behind the, the barn here. And it looks like this Pottinger is doing a pretty good job compared to what shape the discs are in. The discs have quite a bit of wear to them here. So this was alfalfa. We're just trying to make a little bit of dirt here is all. And um, it's, it basically probably wouldn't need anything. We'd probably be able to no-till right into it, but we wanted to make sure we had an adequate amount of dirt here.
All right, let's get some planting done before we get rained out here. Well, this sky is getting black. Um, I don't know, I think we're on borrowed time here, but we just have to give her a try. Liner's working perfect, no sensor issues or anything to speak of. Monitor is nice and quiet. So it's a little peaceful here. I don't know if they call this the calm before the storm or not. But um, we'll just have to see how it goes. We'll uh, join back up with you in a little while here. If we get rained out, we get rained out. No big deal. That is the flow detection warning. We just cornered there a little bit. Conditions are decent, to say the least. Another flow detection warning. That is just because we had turned a little bit and it had recognized that it was putting out more flow or not enough compared to the amount of seed that was going out. So we'll keep plugging away here. It'd be nice to at least get these two pieces done. Sarah has moved on to the next farm, if you will. And uh, I don't know if she's going to get that done before the day is out or not. She's actually just folding up, pulling out right as we speak. So Sarah's just getting done now. She's pulled out of that other field. We haven't quite made one whole revolution around this field. And it is getting dark. The sky is getting dark, but it does look like we've got some clear weather coming in behind this storm front. And I don't see it. There's nothing on the radar indicating that we have anything for any significant amount of rain. Now, it was sprinkling a little bit when we left the shop, but... I figured it was going to just blow over and then as soon as we pulled in down here the sky turned a little darker and it looks like it could pour any minute. So we'll just have to see how things go here. We'll just keep plugging away. These fields here are only about eight, nine acres a piece. So we'll join back up with you in a little while here. So we are cornering and the eighth fertilizer manifold valve there is blinking right now. And I don't know if you could see that light flashing or not. You can't see it when it's real bright. But um, if you do have a warning come up, a flow detection warning here, it will light up the units that are having the problem. Uh, so if you had a hose come off or something, you'd be able to figure out which one uh, was having the flow detection problem. I don't know, them lights, instead of them being on the bottom of the unit, they should be sideways so you could see them during the daylight. Or they should, you know, be of a different color instead of a white light, like a red light or something that came on solid would uh, be rather handy. So we've got a couple units there. We've got three of them on that right wing that it just flashed. And I don't know right now if that's coming up on the camera or not, but we come around that corner and what had happened was because we were turning in a counterclockwise rotation, 
those several units on that right hand side of the planter sped up to compensate for the swing of the planter the left side would have slowed down with the amount of seed that it put out however the right side would have sped itself up and then what it what the computer is doing is it is recognizing that there's more seed going out compared to the amount of fertilizer going out this pump system on here only has two actual manifolds there's eight valve sections but there's only two actual manifolds although it is doing variable rate it is only doing variable rate across the whole planter it's not doing um, variable rate per uh, row like we are able to do uh, with the seed here it is able to shut off each row individually once we get into planted ground but it's not able to put out a, a varied rate of fertilizer per row so we'll just keep plugging away here that's gonna about do it for this video i don't know how much more planting i'm gonna be able to do but uh we got a few raindrops there and then it, it that's all that's it has stopped uh the rain has stopped coming down so it looks like we're gonna be able to just keep on motoring along here and uh we've got a little bit of rain coming off of the the grate that's on top of the cab here a little bit of water flowing off of it but uh the hood's not wet of course the hood would dry itself off but the windshield you know if we were working for the, the uh, county or the state or something, the highway department, we would have a circle on our windshield. Well, it might only be this big, and if two raindrops fall inside that circle, we would shut down and go home. But that's not the case here. So we're just going to keep plugging away here, and uh, any little bit that we can get done tonight is just going to be that much more we have to do the next time around when it dries up. So we'll catch you at the next one, folks. Take her easy. And uh, thanks for watching. Hit the thumbs up if you like these videos. Remember to do that. I, I don't usually ask that. But uh, it does help the old algorithm out. So we're just going to keep plugging away. And yes, we ended up getting rained out. So I've got this side hill done here. We're on our last little tiny pass. We've got the other half of that field to do, but at least we got this side hill done and we did it while it was sprinkling for the most part, but it is obviously too wet here to keep going.